get some insights on the news shaping the markets. And for that, we welcome in Rebecca Walzer, president of Walzer Wealth Management. Good Monday morning, Rebecca. How are Good you morning, feeling Nicole. about the market? I'm excited. I think it's a lot of, uh, a lot of activity this week, so it's going to be an interesting week. So what are you watching for? I know we have jobs on Friday, right? That's always key. What else is on your mind? I think, Nicole, when we looked at Wednesday, we got the Fed minutes from Wednesday, and we really saw that there were some members that were still concerned that inflation was too sticky. And even to the point that some members said, hey, you know, we might have to raise further or keep higher for longer. That really rocked the market on Wednesday. We definitely had a, we turned from green to red. And, you know, so now we've got the Friday PCE data, which basically, you know, the, the Wall Street is kind of saying, oh, it's softer. Basically, it, it is what we expected, and the, and the rate of increasing is slow. Down, so we still have month over month an increase in you know and headline of 0.2 percent. So we still see a big number, and it's certainly not close to the two percent. It's closer to 2.8, 2.7 on headline and core. But Nicole, it's going in the right direction. So if we get, we're expecting 185,000 jobs on Friday. If we get another miss. Um, then that would really uh, start to paint the picture for the Fed that they could be potentially more accommodative, especially, Nicole, since they've relied so heavily on labor this whole time as their sort of stalwart, or, you know, labor's fine, labor's fine. So if we get softer inflation data with PCE and we start to see maybe a miss or softness in the jobs numbers on Friday, then I think the Fed is, uh, is a lot more likely to start to talk about accommodative easing, and that would give us our much higher percentage than 54 percent right now, which is what we have for September rate cut. Understood. You know, as we think about the jobs report on Friday, um, labor has gotten, you know, obviously we've seen unemployment just so slightly going in the direction that the Fed wants. And so we'll wait for those numbers throughout the week. We'll get jolts and ADP and claims and all that. Um, what do you make of the positions in the market? Because as you noted, granted, I don't think people are still thinking a hike is on the table, though it's never off the table, but I don't <laughs> think that's what people are thinking. Um, but, you know, they just sort of got wary as to when that cut may come or not. And so that affects their portfolios, how they may position portfolios, right? Yeah, I mean, when you start the year off, Nicole, with the, you know, everyone thinking that we're going to have six, which I said in December, there's no chance for six. We'll be lucky if we get three. Now here we are in June talking about the probability of a September cut. So I think the market has adjusted in, in large stance to maybe one cut this year and only one and maybe have to wait till September, even possibly November. But to your uh, earlier guest from, you know, Oliver's show, you know, Europe is starting to show more and more economic slowdown. And so if we continue to see that that softness goes from Europe to Asia to the to the West to us, you know, to the to the United States, we're always the last because as the World Reserve Standard, we're able to export our inflation to other countries a lot more easily than they can can deal with it themselves. So we do have the, all of that going for us, Nicole. But the truth is, let's be honest, this market, as well as it's done, it's to large extent the AI stocks and specifically NVIDIA. So if we extract those from the broader economy, we don't have a healthy foundational, broad sector supported recovery, not yet. And so that will again lead to the Fed probably being more accommodative. And, you know, look, I mean, there's no doubt that we're still getting earnings. We're still getting different pieces of information. Um, do you feel positive on the market? You know, I'm a bear this year, Nicole. You know all the reasons why. I'm certainly globally, macroeconomically very bearish, uh, not only because of the BRICS block and their rapid de-dollarization, but also because of all of the geopolitical conflicts. I mean, every time China surrounds Taiwan and, uh, and some sort of war game, uh, I, I just start to think about the market and what is going to happen, you know, if we were to. And, and I know there's been all kinds of analysis that war is actually economically good. It helps all the defense stocks and the defense sector, the military stocks. All of that is true, but at the at the same time, Nicole, there's just a larger problem globally with a 65. This is like a super election year. 65 countries are going to the polls this year. We have all of these Middle East, Ukraine, and Taiwan situations happening, and we have the BRICS bloc trying to de-dollarize as fast as possible, buying up gold. So I am a bear on this year. I do think we're going to have a lot of economic disruption before the year's over. Right, understood. Um, look, you know, and we may get that cut from Europe before we do here at home, right? I mean, that's exactly. the idea, too. Um, maybe we'll follow. 
Um, you know, when we think about the election and how people should position a portfolio between now and the back half of the year, if you're feeling bearish or you're feeling wary or defensive, what are some good things to do or not do with your portfolio? It's funny you asked that, Nicole, because Piper Santa just came out last week and did an analysis with Biden and Trump and said if Biden gets elected, then 10 year treasuries will definitely be higher. And I agree with that analysis. And I think it's because um, not that Trump showed a lot of fiscal restraint when he was president, but it was more so uh, if you, we look at the total numbers, it was more so for coronavirus related than it was tax cut related. But I definitely think that both presidents used the Federal Reserve in expansionary monetary stimulus type ways. And that's my concern with both because the end of fiat is upon us. We are seeing the world de-dollarize and go back to global precious metals as their back reserve. So uh, that is also scary because, Nicole, obviously we have followed modern monetary theory extensively and we have uh, a federal budget and a federal deficit and a federal debt that uh, shows that. So if we continue to stimulate and we continue to need to spend $7.3 trillion a year just to have a, a country, uh, we're going to have some kind of dollar uh, problem eminently. And so people need to also think about that as well. And I definitely love the precious metals uh, to hedge against the inflation risk that we have. Yeah. All right. Rebecca Walser, great to see you. Walser Wealth Management. Thank you, Rebecca.